Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 22, part B. So last time we talked about, uh, we finished up on how to find a probability uh, or how, how to find a, um, actually we talked about how to convert, uh, how to find a z-score if we were given an area or probability. And we started talking about how to convert z-scores to raw scores. So let's finish that and finish up this section and start the next section briefly. Okay, so last time we did this problem where we uh, talked about uh, how many standard deviations um, away from the mean a value is. And we came up that with the answer that in this case z was negative 0.33. And that means that it's uh, a negative one-third of a standard deviation away from the mean. And because it's negative, that means it's below the mean. That tells us it's below the mean. So the quantity that we used is called a z-score. And here is the formula you definitely want on your formula sheet. And because of our table being two decimal places, except for those two exceptions, uh, we'll round z-scores that we calculate to two decimal places. Anything we read from a table, we don't round, period. No matter what it is, we don't round it, okay? That's, it's already been rounded. So let's look at this example. The height of adult females in the U.S are normally distributed with a mean of mu 64.5 inches and sigma is 2.5 inches. If x is 69, what is z? So how do we get our z-score off of a raw score of 69 inches? So we write our formula. So always write your formula first, then plug in the values for this whole course. That's going to help you not make mistakes. So for x, we plugged in 69. That's the actual value of the person's height. And then mu was given as 64.5 right here. And so we plug in for mu, 64.5, and we use the sign that was given. And then we divide by sigma, which is 2.5. So when we do this subtraction, we get uh, 4.5 divided by 2.5. And that turns out to be 1.80. So that is our answer. It's The z-score is positive 1.80. So that tells us that this is 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. If this is 64, this is 69. In x, then in z, 64 corresponds to our mean, which is 0. And then z would be 1.80 here. And so this 69 and this 1.80 correspond to the same probabilities, okay? So how do we convert, convert z-scores to raw scores? So how do we go backwards? If I'm given a z-score, how do I make that into a raw score? Well, I have to know mu and sigma to do that. So let's look at the IQ scores. And it says the IQ scores of U.S. adults are normally distributed with a mean of, uh, of a 100 and a standard deviation of 15. What is the IQ score for that goes with the Z of 1.75? So here I've written down my formula, and now I'm going to plug in. And I'm going to, so that will give me X. So mu is 100. And then I have a positive 1.75 for the Z, and then sigma is 15. So 1.75 times 15 is 26.25. So this is 100 plus 26.25. So the answer is 100, oops, 26.25. So that would be the IQ score that is 1.75 standard deviations above the mean. So that covers everything we can do with the standard normal distribution. Um, as far as solving some problems and answering questions. And now we need what we just learned in section 7.2 to do anything in section 7.3. So this, uh, this body of knowledge that you need from the set of skills that you need from 7.2, you need them uh, for 7.3, 7.4, and 7.5 as well. So, um, and then you'll need some of this in chapters 8 and 9 um, in order to do those problems. So you definitely want to learn how to do that and become comfortable with it so it's not an issue for you.
So in real world situations, it's rare that a random variable, uh, whatever we're measuring, has a standard normal distribution. Uh, I know one author that really looked and tried to come up with something, and um, he came up with something close, but it was such a stretch that it, it just seemed fabricated, even though it was correct. It was, it was very awkward. So uh, just know that we rarely, if ever, encounter the standard normal distribution in nature. But we do encounter a lot of normal distributions. They just have a different mean, a different mu, and a different sigma, a different standard deviation. So um, we're going to talk about the general or just the normal distribution. So it will have a mean of mu, and, which is usually not zero, and a standard deviation sigma, which is usually not one. So in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to convert data values. This is raw scores or x values, to z-scores in order to find a probability. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to take the probability that we're given, we're going to be given probability, and we're going to convert that to a z-score. We're going to find the z-score associated with that. And once we have the z-score, we can reverse the process like we did up here and find the raw score, which is usually what we're interested in. You don't want tell people to tell you the z-scores if you ask between what two heights uh, or between or above what height uh, does it take, how high do you have to be or tall do you have to be, excuse me, um, to be in the top 10% of uh, females in the U.S. As, as far as height. So you don't want to know a z-score, you want to know an actual height in inches or in feet in inches. So we're going to have short videos for each of the type of problems. And so there will be six types of problems that you can solve this way. And we've gone over those six problems in 7.2. We're just going to now add some extra steps before we're able to um, solve the problem. So um, we're going to have, a, we're going to do the same thing, but now um, it's going to take an extra step or two to get to the answer. So many of these videos will not be by me. So you'll be able to see uh, some videos by with some variety now by some other authors and other uh, uh, teachers. And so I hope they're very informative. And uh, we will. I hope you take care of yourself and uh, make sure that for each uh, video that you sent, put in your uh, lecture notes that you scan in the notes, class notes that you take on those videos. Update your formula sheet with your z-score and with your value of x, even though it's the same formula here. These are really the same formula here and here, just this one's solved for z, this is solved for x. Okay, that's how we got that. If you have questions, come to my virtual office hours. If you can't make that, then email me. But again, email me two pictures, one of your work, so far, and two of the problem. So I don't always have access to the problem, so if you send me both of these things, I should be able to help you through email. I hope you'll take care of yourself, be safe, and we'll see you next time.